Hello, I'm Noah Nerd, and this is going to be a video where I was requested actually, sort of. So somebody got in touch with me asking about uh, the basics of React. So getting a sort of basics overview of core concepts of React. So I thought it'd be quite good to do a video which covers the uh, core concepts you have to learn in React and maybe do a few examples as well on screen of implementing those concepts. So this is just going to be, at first I'm just going to list, um, so I'm going to list the uh, concepts you have to learn about and then demo them one by one. So it'll be very uh, linear hopefully and easy to understand, well not necessarily easy to understand but at least logical and progressive in some sense. Okay, so React, what is it? It's a JavaScript library. It's technically a library. People often get mixed up for it as to whether it's a library or framework, but it's a library. Uh, and I'm just gonna, like I said, I'm gonna roll through the core concepts, which is JSX, uh, components and props, passing, state, and its life cycle, uh, how to create events, uh, bind them, conditional rendering, and basically like, just covering the main concepts that are co covered in the documentation but I'll do uh, some examples as well to demonstrate how to actually use that in a real world project. Uh, I'm not going to cover everything like I said, I'm just going to cover the main things that you're going to use day to day like props you'll use a lot, making components you'll use a lot. So yeah, let's start off with JSX. So if you're coming from like a more traditional front-end development background and you've not really touched any React or done any React programming, this is going to be really weird and unnatural at first using JSX. So JSX is sort of like a mix of um, JavaScript and HTML. Uh, when I first started using React about four years ago, I was just really confused by it because it was a, it was like just yeah just such it just didn't feel right but actually once you get the used to it it's very powerful um sex so it you basically are mixing your logic with your uh, ui interface essentially it feels very strange at first but it does make sense once you get used to it so i think i'll demo something now uh just using writing JSX in the uh, render function. Render. Okay, so let's go to our open your projects in your IDE. So if I go open, <laughs> it's pretty simple. Now we're going to call it again. What did they call it? React, open it up in this window. Okay, so we're just doing this based on create React app just because it's fast and I have to mess around with tons to get it up and running. So we need to create React app. That's what you'll see for so you start it up with an npm start. It creates a local host, port 3000 usually. But let's get to the coding part. So I'm going to do a components. Uh, so I'm just going to render everything in this uh, app. Not the app. Yeah, app. So let's just uh, create some JSX first. Go into presentation mode. So let's see what's going on here. So we import React. This is all our imports, like what we're actually importing. What um, so React obviously is pretty core. Cool. We need to import that in. Logo is just a graphic that's been imported in now because this is like a uh, like I said a demo thing. And we've got a return, which returns the actual JSX. Which there's not really much going on there, it just looks like normal HTML. But 
So let's create some JSX. Also want to add a let's just create a const which uh, has got no oh, okay just there const uh, hello world equals h1 hello world I am JSX. And if I put this instead of carry all this nonsense, I have to put that. And then I'll just go hello. See, it finds it. The const sort of render that expression here. It's a variable. And if I just boot up, I'll go away. Yo. I'll just boot up. Change drive. Call it demo react. npm start boot it up. So it's like, oh, this is how you boot it up, just npm start. Pretty simple. Obviously, you need node installed if you didn't know already. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, this is a requirement. There we go, so you can see it says hello world I am JSX. Cool. Well let's just do uh, as an example, shut that down. It's just something else I've never already what if we did this as well? So if we can we can put mathematical expressions in there like five plus five. Hello world five plus five. Ten. Whoa. So that's a really simple example. Here's some maths. Another real core concept within React is components and passing props. So a component is basically a way of creating a reusable piece of code that you could use again and again and again. It's very useful once, once especially once you start coding on a larger level. Like at the minute, I'm working on a well, I work on two apps in my day job, both of which I'd love to show actually, but probably. Not very kosher to do so, get in trouble. Um, but they're both like sort of one certainly an enterprise level application, one's a bit more creative. But uh, having reusable components is really useful, especially in the enterprise level app, because we often have um, pieces of code or pieces of um, UI or basically chunks that we need to reuse again and again and again in slightly different contexts. So uh, class components are really useful for that. Um, and then props is basically a way of passing uh, information between uh, different components. So for example, if you had a component that was like, I don't see a top level component called library. If you had individual books, maybe you want to open a book probably create a component called open book which would then out and then the this is just an example of top of my head but the, the library would contain all an array of all the books and then the component would open whichever specific book you passed in very random example maybe but I'll try and demonstrate that actually so the, the thing to remember there is that it's very good for using reusing reusability and it just uh, makes you like and also as well you could so if in the, using the same analogy of the library and the books you could uh, pass down a prop and then access properties of that prop in the child component if that makes sense so you had a parent and child relationship um, so that's that's uh, useful to know and you saw another concept to get in your head in terms of components and passing props down to them. So library, 
pass down to book and that is a random example I've come up with I suppose. Okay so state and life cycles are very 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 okay so this is the first stage of this not very posh looking but uh, I always find that actually quite frustrating uh, writing it just I usually just copy and paste uh, <laughs> that's my that should be my catchphrase uh, a sort of template for it because writing all this is just laborious and boring and if you miss like one thing it just goes <laughs> but this is basically the structure of a class component so you have a constructor and you put pass your um, set your initial state values here. So we'll just create one called test. Actually, I'll create another one called uh, something like book name, and I'll create that as a string. So I'll just pass a string in uh, the last move. I don't know why. Oh come on, a typo. My title. And then you can then write in this is where we start to use state in JSX, which is cool. So for example if I wanted to put my title is uh book name this dot state. So we write it like this this dot state book name dot state book name. Which accesses the state, says, looks it up, and says, "Oh, it's book name." It should come up as the last group once you've rendered the component as well in the main app JavaScript file. So let's just save that. Go to app.js, and then to render a component, you do it like this: so import uh, the name of the component, which is book from uh, in this example not that components see nice and it shows you what it is book okay and then I'll just go put this where it's get rid of this layer right out of it and put book I should now with any look, render that little fragment. Who will invoke my title as the last groove? So that's now the state. It's representing the state. And yeah, so that's that's the that's the state that's been set there, the initial state to the last groove. Cool. So again, once again, uh, we've created a component here. I've shown you how to import a component in. Uh, I've gone to props actually. So for props, what if you wanted to pass a prop to a component? I'll show you how to do that now. So this is sort of like, we'll do sort of the same thing and we'll do this, there we go. If I wanted to pass a prop, I'd do this. Um, so let's just do an owner prop, call it owner equals Barry. Yeah. <laughs> see it pops up there which is good hopefully <laughs> uh -huh. Barry so there you go 
that's a prop this is a state this is a state this is a prop passing the parent to the child so I mean yeah that's amazing and everything but uh, it's not really not really much going on there that's really impressive so so what if we um, wanted to change the name of the or I don't know basically add an event so I'm just going to keep it very simple because I just want to demonstrate the functionality the actual core fundamentals just go change book do 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 boing create new function mm, let new name equal the first group for some reason that's funny that's not really funny I'm saying <laughs> stupid this dot and then we're gonna use the this dot set state method to then update the state of book name to this variable we've just defined. Ding. Oh, oh, there we go. So we're going to go book name. And do I set it to the new name? Okay, all good. But uh, how are we going to. Okay, we if you wanted to create this as a button, so just go on click equals this dot change book. Then we need to use the this keyword. I'll just uh, put change that book. So the logic here is in the JSX we have a binded event which I've not actually binded yet so I'll do that. So let's do that next. I'll do an event binding. There are ways around having to do this by the way. Uh, but I am just used to doing it now. So I just do it. So it even comes up as a prompt, this to change book. Equals this dot change book dot bind this, which ah, come on, <laughs> which basically uh, binds the event. Let's just see what that looks like. Do, 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 do. See the first groove, so it changes. It doesn't change back though, so it's not really great in the minute, but my title is the last groove of my own inquiry. Changed that book. Now it's first groove. But maybe when I add some. Maybe that's not really that useful, really. I mean, it just changes one word <laughs> it's not great so uh we can do something like and remembering that all that this is, is javascript so uh, i mean this this very very simple example maybe i just want to create two states so it's just something like if uh this stops maybe you just want to create so just switches between two states it's a very simple example, but if this dot, if you wanted to do that, you'd do something like, well, what you could also do is something like a const, uh, const uh, book equals this dot state. So this, this is can be, they're just showing this as it can be sometimes quite useful just to store it in a variable in the function itself. So that if book equals equals the last groove. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah, so. So we have to explicitly state it. Which is uh, oh yeah, not really sophisticated that, but I'm just doing it to show that you can. All it is is JavaScript, really. So. do that in a variable, I'm just going to do it this way just because why not? It's annoying, isn't it? Oh, typo again. Is it now? Is it? Change the book, change the book, change the book, last screw, first screw, last screw, first screw, last screw, first screw. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so. That's that. And then what else is it going to talk about? So I've done components of props. Ah, maybe on a component did mount. So let's cover component did mount a bit. <laughs> so let me just find. Do you want to put this just below a constructor? Component did mount useful so just go um, do something like alert just as if yo a mountain yo so it just runs once it runs okay so that's, that's a real very super simple example but just do something like okay. I don't know what I'll do. So I'll just demonstrate that you can also add <laughs> arrays in the state as well. So let's just put a few different books like Bob's Hill, Bob's Hill. For some reason that's funny. Uh, Craig's bad day bad day bad day you to zoom and bob to common common's toast toasty so we create an array there, and then I want to create another way. Component did mount. I'll just do a random set state for create a Books and because they're state books, so we've got just a quick, easy reference point for it. And then we're going to do something like I don't know, just select a random value for the array or something, or just select initially, just do yeah, it'll have to be something like select a random value, or it's just going to be boring. So I don't know, I know. Uh, Rand index equal and a what is it again? K 
Okay, let me go. Books. That's uh, the random book. Random book. Just this empty string. This is our, at first this is a state we're gonna use for the run, just this is very random, I just wanna demonstrate it. You just use like normal JavaScript basically. I want to do this dot set state. Uh, what I'll do this dot set state. Random book. Books, random index. So just selects a random. This is the random index selector, and then this is just yeah, saying grab books, generate the random index, and grab the. That's probably a bit more advanced, really, but it's not that advanced. It's not like rocket science or anything. But and then let's just do the random book is. The random book is this dot state random book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh god, my computer's dying. Hill, change that book, Bob's Hill again, it can be the same thing twice, Carmen's Toast, yeah that's so, yeah. that I guess, and I think I'll also just do an example of, condition. so I was talking about doing conditional Turning the oper uh, oper using to conditional turning operators to uh, to render JSX elements based on a condition. So let's just do it if let's do that. So yeah, let's do that. So you go if this random this is the opening of this of it equals and then just select one of these like I don't know, Craig's bad day. So every time he goes Craig's bad day, he's gonna go. So check for this. If it's, is it Craig's bad day? Is it? It's gonna render bad day. And then if not, good day. Good day, and I need to change that from case to lowercase. There we go. Nice to change both. Go away. Oh, I also need to close it. I also need to close the PTAP. I also don't need to do that. Okay, save that. And then let's run it again. Bad days, Craig's bad day. Craig's bad day. Good day. See, it's good day now. So yeah, I think that probably is enough. I've probably gone on for quite a while actually. 24 minutes. Well, not too bad. I think that's probably enough for now. You can also do like things like mapping lists and keys. So just basically mapping um, arrays. But I don't think I want to show that i just wanted to talk about the basic core fundamentals and show a few little demos of using those core fundamental skills so yeah okay so i hope you found that useful on some level it's a bit late so i apologize if i'm very low energy but i've actually been coding all day <laughs> 
Got two deadlines coming up. But, um, I hope that's been useful for, uh, for the guy that requested this as well. I hope you've learned something and just given you more of a overview of the basic fundamental things you need to get wrap your head around.